This is Susan from Goodly Studios and today I'm going to show you how to use glyphs in Affinity Designer to create flourishes for your word cutouts for the Glyphforge. It's real simple so to start we are going to just go to file and create a new document and I just like to size mine the same as the Glowforge bed right here 20 inches wide by 12 inches high so I can kind of see what things look like so I'm going to hit create and this is my artboard you don't really have to worry too much about that but we do need the artistic text tool so I'll take that and click and drag it to the size that I want and I'm just going to type the word flourish and once I have that I'm going to change my font to a font that I know has glyphs this one is called Amistary Script and it is from Creative Fabrica and once I have that I'm going to either click V on my keyboard or click this little cursor button um, so I can click and drag it as needed I want to leave a little bit more space here. I don't like how that overlaps, so I'm just going to add a space there. And then I'm good to go. And I actually, to really leave room for the flourish, I will shrink that, oops, shrink that down a little bit more. All right. Um, so usually we want to add a flourish on the last letter to start with. So I'm going to come up here to text show glyph browser and i want to make sure that my glyph browser has the same font that i'm using so i'm going to come here to amistary script and if this is a font that you like and use want to use a lot you can add it as a favorite because then you can use it'll keep a list of your recently used fonts and also your favorites so you can access those easily it's one of the really nice things about Affinity Designer. All right, so um, back to the Glyph browser. You can adjust the size of it here. I suggest the largest side size because everything else is completely useless. I'm not even sure why they have that so small. So largest size, so you can actually see what you're looking at. Even then, if you have poor vision, you might need a magnifying glass. I don't know why they make it so tiny. But what you can do is just kind of scroll down here until you find the H's. And you can just kind of play around and you'll double click with the H highlighted and to, to replace it. So you can just kind of play around until you find one that you like. Oh, that looks pretty good. Um, there's also this one that looks pretty good. Some of them are like very similar, but sometimes different sizes. I think I'm just going to stick with this one. I like that look. And then I want to add a little flourish down here too. So I'm going to choose the R. And then I'm going to come over here on my Glyph browser and scroll down to my R's. L-M-N-O-P and I want to, oh that looks pretty good, but I kind of want a little bit more. This font has a lot of options, which, ooh, I like that. And I like how it connects to the S2 there, because if I'm cutting this out, it's just going to add extra stability for me. Some of these, I don't, you know, that spacing obviously doesn't look the greatest. This one is kind of cool, but I would have to do some work to connect these two together. Um, obviously, this would be at the beginning of a word. And it's too busy. Okay, I'm going to stick with this one. I think that is perfect. So what I'm going to do now is um, in your layers panel, you'll notice that this is currently registered as text. So I'm going to go ahead. And use my move tool and I'm going to right click and convert to curves all right so now you see it made this a group of letters and we can go ahead and get rid of the glyph browser get it out of our way 
I made it a group of letters. So if you look here and you take away the fill and you just make it a stroke, so the stroke is the outline of the word, you'll notice that this does not look right. And whether you cut or whether you engrave on the Glowforge, this is going to not look pretty. So uh, first things first, we want to move the F closer so it's all connected. So to do that, you can just select the F. And I just use my arrow keys to shift things over just so that they don't get like moved up or down too much. Okay, so now they're overlapping. So now look what happens when I connect the F and the L. I'm going to add use this tool right here to add these together. And you'll want to pay attention right where they connect. See, now that's just one solid shape. And I'm going to do that to all the rest of these areas where they overlap by just selecting, click shift, and select all my layers here, my curves, and hit the add button. And this way you have one clean cut and engrave. The only thing I'm noticing here is that my eye dot is not attached. And this, you know, depending on what you're doing with this, this could be a very fragile area too where this eye is loose. So this is like the only thing it's hanging on to if you think about it that way. What I'm going to do is come here to the eye and the problem with this is that it's already registering this as one image instead of two. So I need to go ahead and divide this. So now I have the eye and the dot to the eye. So I'm just going to use my arrow keys to shift this eye dot down a little bit to where it is connected, so where it's overlapping the body of the eye. And then use that add button again. Okay, so now this is connected. Um, as as far as, you know, connecting the I and the R so it's a little sturdier, there are a couple of things you can do um, just to keep this video from getting too long because I like to keep them short and sweet. I'll just show you one example and that's just that you can simply use a little rectangle here. And it doesn't really matter what order these in. I'm just showing you. And you can just add them all together like that. So that's just going to add some extra stability between those two letters to prevent breaking. All right, I'm going to select all of these individual shapes and click Add. And you'll see now we have one clean line. Everything is going to be attached and ready whenever we cut this out or engrave it and our Glowforge. Generally, if you plan on cutting this out, um, you can just leave it like this as an outline and it'll register as a cut line. Or if you plan on engraving it, and sometimes I will do this anyways, I will just send it filled and then it'll let you choose in the Glowforge. Uh-oh, haha, <laughs> trouble. Um, so here's an issue right here, which I'm glad this came up because this is a common issue which you probably would have run into anyways. Um, what's happening here is it's combining some of the holes as a... Um, I don't know how to explain it. But it's a pretty common issue, um, so I'll teach you how to address that. So you'll want to um, select your shape and hit Divide. And, well... Actually, I'm just going to do control Z. Something happened here. Okay, right here. Here's the problem. If you hit divide here, divide? Aha. Okay, it's going to divide all the little holes in the shapes and the letters as separate shapes. So like this is a shape and this is a shape and this is a shape. So, um down here you'll see this is your main shape, the body of it. And basically what you'll need to do is just select all of these and hit 
And let's pray that it works. Hit subtract. You can do this individually as well. Aha. Uh -huh. So now it's deleted all those extra shapes except for your pretty little flourished word. Okay. And you can go ahead and um, remove the outline if you... What I like about sending it out as a solid shape is that in the GlowForge user interface, you can choose whether you want to cut this or engrave this, where you... Hmm, now that I say that, it might do it if you outline it too. Um, but for some reason, I started doing it this way and I liked it. <laughs> so who knows? That just might be a weird quirk of mine. As an added bonus, I'm going to show you how you can um, thicken these lines a little bit, some of these thin lines, so that you can prevent extra breakage. So you'll want to make sure that there's a stroke around your text and you'll want to make it as thick as you like, but you want to make sure you don't fill in these teeny holes. So you want it not too much thicker, but thick enough to just kind of add some extra sturdiness to these thinner lines. Okay, um, once you have done that, you will go to layer and you will expand the stroke. And you'll notice, well, okay, I'm gonna try that one more time. You will, <laughs> you'll go to layer and expand the stroke. There it is. Okay. So then what you have here is if like if you make this one invisible is you have um, two separate shapes. Like you could take this and move it and they're on they're separate. So it's the stroke line that you just made and the text. And now I've got to make sure that these are nice and aligned both vertically and horizontally so that they're perfectly aligned. And then what you want to do is just select both of those and hit add. And it just adds them together as one shape and then your lines are a little thicker. And that is all you do to thicken your lines. It gives you a little bit more weight and sturdiness. All right, so that is how you make a beautiful flourished word that is ready for the Glowforge. And that is how you use the Glyph Browser in Affinity Designer. I hope that this helps you to make something beautiful today and I will see you next time on Goodly Studios.